Hello and welcome to DD India. I'm Lepakshi Khurana and you're watching Express News. Republican candidate and former President Donald J. Trump won the U.S. presidential election gathering more seats than his Democratic rival Kamala Harris. In his victory speech at his campaign headquarters in Florida, Donald Trump said that he believed this was the greatest political movement ever. He took to the stage with his wife Melania and several of his children. Trump thanked voters for the extraordinary honor of being elected after winning the key battleground states of Pennsylvania, North Carolina and Georgia. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi congratulated Donald Trump on his historic election victory. In his message, PM Modi wrote that he looked forward to renewing India-US collaboration to further strengthen the India-US comprehensive global and strategic partnership. Other global leaders, including French President Emmanuel Macron, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and European Union Chief Ursula von der Leyen, also extended wishes to Donald Trump. Britain's Prime Minister Keir Starmer congratulated Donald Trump and called him the closest of allies and the UK-US relationship as special. US Senator Ted Cruz has secured a third term and held a strong lead over Democratic challenger Colin Alred. Kamala Harris campaign co-chair Cedric Richmond said that she will not address the supporters on election night. Crowds of Harris supporters dispersed from Harvard University, Washington after the announcement. The federal agency warned of bomb threats at polling stations in multiple U.S. states on election day, adding that none were credible but many appeared to originate from Russia. Russia has denied the allegations. Russia said that relations with the United States were at a historic low, but Kremlin is open to dialogue and would see what happens if Donald Trump returns to the White House in January. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu dismissed his defense minister Yoav Gallant on Tuesday after public differences over Gaza conflict. In a video address, Netanyahu said he had no trust in Gallant over the management of Israel's ongoing military operations. Former Foreign Minister Israel Katz has been appointed as Israel's new defense minister. Katz vowed on Tuesday to defeat Israel's enemies and achieve the goals of the conflicts with Hamas and Hezbollah. Gideon Saar has been appointed as the new foreign minister of the country after his predecessor Katz took charge as the defense minister. Thousands of Israelis rallied in Tel Aviv late on Tuesday to protest the sacking of Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, calling on his successor Israel Katz to prioritize a hostage deal to return the captives still held in Gaza. North Korean troops have entered the fight in Russia's conflict against Ukraine, clashing for the first time with Ukrainian forces who are occupying a large chunk of Russia's Kursk region. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky on Tuesday said the first battles between the Ukrainian military and North Korean troops has opened a new page in instability in the world. One person was injured after a Ukrainian drone struck an apartment building in Russia's Belgorod region on Tuesday, causing fire. The blaze spread across three apartments in the building. Russian forces in retaliation struck various sites in Ukraine. Russia destroyed Ukrainian army's manpower and equipment assembly areas in 143 regions and also damaged military airport infrastructure. A boarding bridge attached onto Kuwait Airways plane door suddenly collapsed at Dhaka's International Airport early on Wednesday. All 284 passengers were disembarked for safety purposes. India's External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar called on Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese in Canberra on Wednesday. He conveyed the warm greetings of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Dr. S. J. Shankar met Peter Dutton, the leader of Liberal Party of Australia. Both shared perspectives on global issues and appreciated his support for bilateral ties. 
The Indian minister also met New Zealand Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Winston Peters in exchange of views on Indo-Pacific and global issues. Jeshank also met UAE's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Zayed in Canberra on Wednesday. The External Affairs Minister is on a two-nation tour. Earlier, Jeshankar attended the rare Sina Down under 2024 session in Canberra where he spoke about opportunities for greater collaboration with Australia and New Zealand. India's Minister of State for External Affairs, Kirti Vardhan Singh, is on a visit to Zambia, interacted with the Indian community in the capital, Lusaka. Kirti Vardhan co-chaired the sixth session of the India-Zambia Joint Permanent Commission with the Zambia's Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister Mulambo Haimbe. Both reviewed the two nations' bilateral relationship and discussed ways to further expand and diversify it. Delegates at the ongoing International Solar Alliance visited a farm near Delhi where they were introduced to India's innovative agro model blending agriculture with solar energy. Information and Broadcasting Minister Ashwani Vaishno announced that the Cabinet approved the decision to strengthen Food Corporation of India by infusing equity of 10,700 crore rupees for working capital in financial year 2024-25. Cabinet also approved a PM Vidyalakshmi scheme to provide financial support to Indian students for pursuing quality higher education. India's Padma Bhushan awardee, musical veteran Sharda Sinha died on Tuesday after battling multiple myeloma, a type of blood cancer, for several years. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed condolences on the demise of the legendary Indian folk singer Sharda Sinha, calling her demise as an irreparable loss for the music world. Indian President Draupadi Murmu also expressed deepest condolences to her family and fans and said her singing will remain immortal. Last rites of Sharda Sinha to take place on Thursday morning in India's eastern state of Bihar. Her last rites would be conducted with full state honours, announced the Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. The 21st edition of India-US Military Cooperation Group meeting commenced at New Delhi on Wednesday. Discussions focused on new initiatives and opportunities for strengthening the ongoing India-US defence engagements. Indian Army Chief General Upendra Devedi interacted with the Chief of Bangladesh Army Staff General Wakir Uz Zaman on a video tele call and exchanged views on issues of mutual interest, including bilateral defense cooperation. Ruckus erupts in JNK Assembly on Wednesday over a resolution on Article 370 restoration. Deputy Chief Minister Surinder Kumar Chaudhary had demanded the resolution. LOP Sunil Sharma had objected to it. Security forces eliminated a terrorist in Bandipura in the Union Territory of German Kashmir on Wednesday. The Indian Army, German Kashmir Police and CRPF launched a joint operation in the Kaitsan Forest area. A gunfight broke out between security forces and terrorists in Ulab Forest area of Kupwara district in India's Union Territory of German Kashmir. India's Home Minister Amit Shah will address the inaugural session of the two-day terrorism prevention conference 2024 on November 7th in New Delhi. Indian equity indices ended it on strong note on Wednesday. At close, the Sensex was up by 906 points and Nifty rose by 271 points. The rupee fell to a record low of 84.28 against the US dollar in closing trade on Wednesday. India's services sector witnessed a robust performance in October 2024 as the service PMI index surged to 58.5, up from a 10-month low of 57.7 in September, according to HSBC, India service PMI compiled by S&P Global. The United States has recently renewed calls for Italy to repeal its domestic web tax. Sources claim that the U.S. insistence increases the risk of retaliation if Rome ignores the request. As Donald Trump wins the U.S.'s presidential elections, Bitcoin touched $75,000 for the first time ever. In anticipation of a Trump victory, global crude oil prices fell 2% on Wednesday. 
European shares jumped nearly 2% on Wednesday, tracking a rise in US stock futures as Donald Trump wins. Asian markets reflected the mixed anticipation of US election results as indexes closed on Wednesday. The Shanghai Composite Index closed at 3,384 points, Japan's Nikkei closed up 2.61% and South Korea's Kospi closed down at 13 points. Apple is said to be the first company fined under new European Union new rules aimed at reigning in the power of big tech. EU regulators charged in June that the iPhone maker had breached the block's tech rules as Apple was found to have failed to allow app developers to steer users to cheaper deals and offers outside of the App Store. Well, time now for a short break. Stay tuned for more News on Express. Welcome to Jharkha, the land of forests. Mesmerizing abundance of nature. Vast accumulation of natural resources. Welcome back to Express News. India's capital, New Delhi's air quality remained very poor on Wednesday morning with the air quality index recorded at 358. Thick toxic foam was seen floating on the Yamuna River in Delhi's Kalandi Kunj area's pollution level in the river remained high. The Delhi High Court has banned Chhat Puja on the banks of Yamuna River saying that the water is dirty and will make people ill. As air quality hit record low in Pakistan's Lahore, the Punjab province has set up a smog war room to tackle severe air pollution. Tropical storm Rafael strengthened into a hurricane on Tuesday evening. Cubans evacuated their homes with their belongings as destructive waves are expected in the western region of the island. Torrential rains caused flash floods in Missouri's St. Louis on Tuesday, impacting local transportation, forcing polling location changes and leaving one person dead. At least 89 people are missing from deadly floods in eastern Spain's Valencia region. At least 217 people died in Valencia flash floods. Damaged houses and dozens of cars piled up on streets in Spain's by Porter after last week's deadly floods, by Porter is one of the worst affected areas with over 60 dead. Nearly 100 people have been evacuated in Vietnam's Tua Thien Hoi province. Residents are instructed to keep away from landslide prone areas as officials are closely monitoring the situation. After drought, salt water intrusion and landslides have severely affected rice production in the Mekong Delta. The Vietnamese government introduced Resolution 120, which focuses on sustainable development to adapt to climate change. Snow finally falls on Mount Fuji after the Japanese mountain's longest ever stint with bare slopes, making 2024 year as the latest arrival of snow. Thousands of people turned out for Adelaide's annual Christmas pageant in Australia, aiming to bring joy to the children. The 40th Havana International Fair began in Cuba, featuring over 800 exhibitors from 63 countries, highlighting diverse sectors. The first autumn auctions of Sakura Shrimp are held in Japan's Shizuoka Prefecture on Tuesday. The cherry blossom pink crusted sands are a speciality of the prefecture's Suruga Bay. 
An annual parade spotlighting the former Ryukyu dynasty was held in Naha City, the capital of southern Japan's Okinawa Prefecture. The traditional parade includes people dressed as the royal family of the Ryukyu dynasty, which ruled the region and their attendants. It recreates the King's New Year's visit to Buddhist temples to pray for peace and a good harvest. The makers in Japan are rolling out new kinds of products whose technologies take advantage of the properties of rubber and resin. Bridstone is working on a new type of tire with no air. According to the Japanese tire company, the product uses a resin that is both durable and flexible enough to support the weight of a car. The international exhibition CIED 2024 is opened in Turkmenistan. An annual crocodile race was organized in Australia. This year's edition will also include a camel race. Designer Lolo Andoche from Benin has transformed the traditional pegne into a contemporary masterpiece, creating a perfect blend of traditional weaving techniques with modern designs. Andoche's recent show in Cotonou featured models walking the runway in bold, innovative outfits crafted from the Pegne fabric. Flaming tar barrels were carried through the streets of Autry St. Mary on Tuesday. The tradition, believed to have its origins in the 1605 gunpowder plot's failed attempt to assassinate King James I of England, is celebrated yearly in the southwestern English town. A rare brown hyena cub has been born at Moscow Zoo. The cub's mother did not survive delivery, so the zoo specialists have stepped in to raise the cub. 11-day Braj Raj Utsav began in India's Uttar Pradesh on Tuesday. The festival was inaugurated by famous Indian actor and member of parliament Hema Malini and Uttar Pradesh Minister Lakshmi Narayan Chaudhary. Makers of the upcoming film Ramana Part 1 and Ramana Part 2 starring Indian actor Ranbir Kapoor announced their release dates. Part 1 of the film will be released on Diwali 2026 and Part 2 in Diwali 2027. The 55th International Film Festival of India scheduled to take place from November 20th to 28th in Goa will pay tribute to icons Raj Kapoor, Tapan Sinha, Akineni, Nageswara Rao and Mohammad Rafi for their contribution to Indian cinema. As Singham again is witnessing success, the makers have dropped a new track titled Lady Singham, showcasing Deepika Padikone's powerful role as Cop Shakti Shetty. Bollywood actors Manoj Bajpayee and Ravina Tandon celebrated 25 years of the critically acclaimed film Shul, released in 1999. Shul is a social drama known for its powerful storyline and intense performances. Indian actors Richard Chadha and Ali Fazal's production Girls Will Be Girls has been nominated for Gotham Awards in the Breakthrough Director category. Bollywood actor Ajay Devgan has released the teaser for his upcoming period film Azad. The makers of the anticipated film Tandale starring Naga Chaitanya and Sai Pallavi have announced 7th February 2025 as its release date. Makers of Pushpa 2, The Rise, unveiled the intriguing poster featuring Alu Arjun and Fahad Fasil. The premiere date for the upcoming dark comedy thriller Greedy People starring Himesh Patel, Lily James and Joseph Gordon-Levitt has been announced. The murder mystery will premiere on Lionsgate Play on November 22nd. Actors Jennifer Lopez and Gerald Jerome jetted to London on Tuesday for a special UK screening of their upcoming biographical sports drama, Unstoppable. The release date for biographical film chronicling the life of pop legend Michael Jackson. Michael has been shifted to October 3rd, 2025 from April 18th, 2025. Kiki Hawkinson, the first ever Miss World, has passed away at the age of 95 at her home in California. 
The Indian Premier League 2025 Mega Auction is going to be held on November 24th and 25th in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. More than 1,500 players have signed up for the Mega Auction. The list includes 320 capped players, 1,224 uncapped players and 30 players from associate nations. Josh Inglis will step in as captain for Australia's third one-day international against Pakistan and the subsequent T20 series. David Warner has been appointed as captain of the Sydney Thunder following Cricket Australia's decision to lift his leadership ban. Arjun Aragasi beat compatriot with Gujarati after five hours of end-to-end -end action in the opening round of the Chennai Chess Grandmasters in Chennai. Incoming Manchester United manager Ruben Amarim delivered a memorable farewell in his final home game for Sporting, leading them to a 4-1 victory over Manchester City. Zabi Alonso's emotional return to Anfield ended in disappointment as Liverpool defeated Bayer Leverkusen 4-0 with Luis Desar scoring a hat-trick. Arsenal captain Martin Odegaard has returned to full training after two months on the sidelines due to an ankle injury, the Premier League club said on Tuesday. Kukugov secured a spot in the semi-finals of the WTA finals with a straight set win over defending champion Ikar Shvedek. And Bianca Adrianko will not be part of Billy Joe King Cup title as the former US Open champion has withdrawn from the event. Well, that's all for this edition of Express News. Keep watching.